Hey everybody, this is Emily here from the Children's Literature Training Academy. I'm going to do a review for you today of this book, The Cat Who Went to Heaven by Elizabeth Coatsworth. It was written in 1930. This is of course a newer edition by Aladdin Books. Um, this book, The Cat Who Went to Heaven, won the Newbery Award Medal for Excellence in Children's Literature in 1931. So it's an oldie. I just read it for the first time. Um, it's a very small book, as you can see. Cute little read. I was a little afraid to read this because one of my um, indoor cats who was 11 passed away about a month ago and I had already had it on my shelf. Like I had pulled out because I wanted to read and then she died and um, unexpectedly she was like fine one night when I went to bed and the next morning she had thrown a blood clot, gone paralyzed and had massive pain and you know we had to let her go but like I was too depressed to read this for a while but the book is not at all what I thought it would be about when I finally read it and I'm just it completely blew my mind um and the book does have some illustrations little ones at the beginning of the chapters um, this is a good story the basis of this story is in eastern religion so the book uh, is really about a um, poor, uh, starving artist in old Japan, ancient Japan, and he has been cursed with a roundabout luck. And the only uh, there are only three characters in the book. It's him. It's the story is about him and his very old, old, even older than he is housekeeper, which is kind of odd. How does he afford to keep this old lady housekeeper when he's so like poor, like starving artist? Um, and so it's about that and it is um one day the housekeeper comes home and brings him a cat in the basket instead of food she went out and brought home a cat and of course cats are considered bad luck in old japan and they're considered cursed and to be devils and not welcomed by the buddha or not blessed by the buddha but this cat had three different colors and the exception to this cat rule or belief was that cats that had these three colors were considered lucky cats so he named the cat good fortune and decided to keep the cat hoping it would change his situation but um because he was destitute he didn't have any work you know he had had new artist no new artist jobs in a while and um they had no food he didn't even know how he was going to feed this poor cat but something about the cat seemed a little bit odd right up front it seemed like it was very intuitive and almost human-like and um, expressed through its cat behavior, almost like its feelings and emotions you can detect when you're reading it. Like the cat had grief and pain and sadness. And um, suddenly not long after, um, the Buddha is visited by a priest, I believe it's a priest, who wants to commission the artist for a job. And the job is to paint a final portrait of the death experience of the actual Buddha. Um, or the Buddha dying, like a painting of him dying. You know, a big job and he gives him money um, to start, more money than he's ever had just to get started. And so it becomes that. And and uh, so there's a little backstory. So cats are not welcomed by the Buddha because they're considered, you know, cursed devils and unwelcome by Buddha. And so um, Buddha, um, part of this book is rooted in previous folk tales, old Japanese folk tales um, uh, about um, the Buddha's previous life as animals, you know, and reincarnation, the, the Jataka tales, if I, the, it's a tongue to the Jakarta tales, <laughs> if I'm saying that right. Um, so, but anyway, the cat was one of the animals that was never, you know, a part of the Buddha's um, previous life experience with animals. So the artist decided to meditate every day and try to take himself through transcendence, you know, into the the spirit, mind, body of the Buddha and try to, to experience what he did as each animal because the painting was about all the animals that came to pay homage to the Buddha when he was dying. And so the painting was going to have all these animals in the painting and he wanted to experience what the Buddha fell and what the animals felt like uh, as this being true. So he did this sort of transcendence meditations where he would go in and you see this descriptive writing in the story about how he was now um, living as a deer and hearing what the deer would hear and experiencing what the deer would experience with being hunted and 
um, the fear it would experience by being hunted and um, what it, it felt like uh, having its babies in the dens, the baby deers. And he did that with all these different animals in the story, which was very well written, very, very good descriptive writing, very good job at putting a human like or personal personality type emotions and, and, and human like features um, and expressions into the animals through his meditations, you know, his, his transcendence into being into their bodies. And then he would you know, do that with each one. And then he would go in and put it into the painting because he wanted the painting to be as authentic as possible. And so this poor cat though, as he would be painting each animal going into this painting after meditating on them and the poor cat started to look sad and grieved and he was, the cat was mesmerized by the painting and, and as time went on. And um, it is then that the artist realized when the painting was complete that there's no, like, he he recognized that the cat observed there was no painting of him in the painting of all these wonderful animals that went to pay homage to buddha when he was dying and um because of this old evil like folk tale about cats and how the whole cat species was left out of that and it seems like very sad and kind of painful and you get a, a real, real feeling of compassion and guilt and sadness uh from a cat's perspective like as an exiled species uh, when he the cat really did love the Buddha and does love the Buddha and loves genuinely and honestly like any cat loves its masters and so and so the artist was able to kind of have the soul connection with the cat and realize the gr the grief of not being in the painting and so um the the artist decides to paint the cat into the painting which is forbidden um, and as soon as he puts the cat into the painting, the cat sees it and looks at the artist, his master, with, with complete gratitude and joy. And then he dies, like immediately dies, just once he knows it, his mission is accomplished, now he can be let go, which is kind of sad. <laughs> but, um, and so then the priest comes to collect the painting and finds out, sees a cat in it that was painted uh, into it and he was like no this painting is garbage we can't accept this because there's no cats and accepted in the realm of Buddha and no compassion for cats and they're devils and and so um, the, he took the painting away uh, he said he was gonna trash and throw away the painting the priest did and it was going to go into the garbage and um, then the next morning as the, as the book comes to you know more a closure there's a miracle occurs the painting actually did get hung in the in the temple and the painting had miraculously changed. The painting now shows the hands of Buddha as he's dying, reaching out with open hands, welcoming and, tr and giving something to the cat, like it giving the cat his forgiveness and acceptance into his realm. But that's not what he had painted into it. So it was almost like a miracle. So it was a very good t tale about forgiveness compassion changing your perspective if you're looking at themes of the book um you know acceptance um and learning to see all creatures as equal um trying to include and welcome in those that stray that are outside of the pack and showing mercy to all creatures and i thought it was such a nice story um I mean, it's very short. It's a sit down and one read. Might take you half an hour to read it. Um, but there is some good introduction to some concepts to Eastern religion in here. So if you're having a middle schooler read this, or if you're, if you're not reading it for yourself, like I did, um, it might be a little dry material. Uh, I don't know how kids, if how many kids can really appreciate the, the hidden message. So you could really use it to discuss what Buddhism is and what what is the folk tale behind it? You could even read him the original folk tale and talk about things like mercy and companion, uh, compassion and forgiveness and devotion and acceptance of all creatures and, and trying to be aware of um, what animals might experience and teaching like more kindness to animals. I did want to read a little glimpse I have here of this beautiful descriptive writing. Um, I marked a passage here um, he does 
uh, she, I'm sorry, does an excellent job in her writing of kind of bringing it to life in through the view of the uh, animal. So I just can't seem to find that page. And there's something I wanted to say after I read it. So it would have been smarter if I had marked it. Okay, here it is. Um... <coughs> This is like a primary passage. The next day when the artist seated himself upon his mat, there was no good fortune, which is the cat, sitting nearby, but discreetly out of the way. For a few minutes, he could not help thinking of his little three-colored cat, but soon he was able to turn his mind to deer. He must paint the animals who came to bid farewell to the Buddha, and he knew the cat was not among them. At first, his thought was sad. But a little by little, he imagined a forest about him, dappled with light and shade, and he himself was a deer, setting small hooves like ebony among the leaves, making no sound, listening with head raised high under its fairy branching of horns. A herd of deer followed him, the young males and the does and the fawns. He led them to secret pastures. At waterhole, he, at the waterhole, he spread his wide nostrils, scented the wind for danger before the others came to drink. If his enemy appeared, he guarded the flight of the herd. His sides were set with spots like jewels. His horns were the most beautiful than temple, more beautiful than temple candlesticks. His eyes were shy and wild and afraid. Slowly, while the artist wandered through imaginary forests as a deer, he felt growing within him the spirit of the Buddha, and he knew that he was the banyan deer. Then it seemed to him that he and his herd had been driven into a great enclosure with another herd of deer whose leader was almost as beautiful as he. His heart beat like thunder between his ribs and a darkness came before his eyes, but his fear was for the sake of his herd. Then there came a king into the enclosure to look at the deer. Um, of course, then it goes into the deers being killed. Uh, so, it, there, you know, there's animals dying in this book and but the writing is very I mean I mean uh, most of the chapters are written as the artist transcending into Buddha himself and his life what it was like as he was Buddha interacting with the animals and then also him going into the animals experiences and it is amazing um, I'm sorry, I keep saying he, but I think she, Elizabeth, the writer, it's amazing how she does that. I, I think she does a very good job. And I keep saying he, I'm thinking of the artist who's the character in the book. Um, there's another good passage here. Um, he imagined that he heard water falling from perfumed fountains nearby. He imagined that young warriors stood grouped about him, gay and witty boys, listening with him to a girl playing a long instrument shaped like a peacock with a tail of peacock feathers of the rainbow. He imagined that his port hydrangeas were a forest of fruit trees and palms leading down to pools filled with pink and white lotuses and that the sparrows he knew so well were white swans flying across the sky. So it's a, it's a very well written book. The classics in children's literature novels are very elegant, um, especially from the 1920s, 30s and 40s and the, the golden era of children's literature, very elegant, um, rich, descriptive, touching probably not what modern day children would be reading um but i love to recommend these books for adults to go back and read them but you could use this if you're a homeschooling parent or a child that has an advanced understanding and you want to introduce the concept of buddhism this would be a good book um to also talk about death and dying um, in the animal life cycle as well so thank you so much everybody for watching i have another book i'm just finishing which is another award winner book called the whipping boy and i will put up a review and discussion of that one in the next couple of days